Welcome to part two of this recording about the body parts in Homeric Greek. In part one, you learned the vocabulary for the different body parts. Now we'll use that vocabulary grammatically, mostly as an excuse to study the dative. The dative turns out to be how you would refer to body parts in a lot of cases. For instance, if you want to say, my elbow hurts, or after the battle, the earth was soaked with blood. Or, he approached with a sword held in his stout hand. Or, oh great Zeus, please let me subdue my enemy under my hands. So let's do some complaining about pain. The way you express this in ancient Greek is, I experience pain in and then the body part in the dative. To experience or to suffer is pascho, and its second aorist is pathon. Pain is usually algea, so we have words like algea pathon or pascho algea. Translate the following into Greek. And by the way, if you want to do some mild swearing, you can use the phrase, Oh, poor boy. Ow, I've got a pain in my wrist. Oh, poor boy. Pasco alge carpo. But also in my shoulder. Kaidomo. and also in my breast. Kaide mazo. He had a pain in his limb. Pathen algea melo. He had a pain in his head. Pathen alge kephale and in his tongue. Kaide glose. My mother is suffering from pain in her hand. Meter pasche alge acheri. and my father in his belly. Kaipater gasteri. Their knees. Gunasi. Their feet. Posin. My dog got a pain in her thighs. Kuon alge apaten me rois. The nose. Hrisi. In English, if the doctor asks me what's hurting, I can't just say tooth. I have to say my tooth. In Greek, the pronoun is optional, but if you use it, it can come before or after the noun. In ancient Greek, when you use a pronoun to modify another noun, there are always two ways to do it. One way is to use the adjectival form of the pronoun, which is what people usually refer to as a possessive pronoun. And then the pronoun agrees with the noun it's modifying in case, number, and gender. The other way to do it is to use the genitive or dative. The genitive would be more common, and then you're saying something like, the house of me. However, for body parts, it seems to be more idiomatic to use the dative. When you use the genitive or dative pronouns to modify another noun, they don't decline to agree with the noun. Since we're using this recording as an excuse to practice the dative, let's focus on the dative pronouns. The singular unstressed dative pronouns are moi, toy, and hoi. 
repeat moi toy hoy you and your companions have just been rescued from a shipwreck and you're listing for your rescuers which body parts have been hurt translate each phrase into Greek using the nominative case for the body part. My tooth. Audusmoi. Your tooth. Audustoi. His tooth. Audusoi. My eyes. Osemoi. Now let's do a few with the personal pronoun before the body part. My lip. Moi gelos. His back. Hoi nooton. Your fingernail. Toi onux. The plural dative pronouns are Hemin, Hemin, Sfisi, Our Heads, Kefelai Hemin, Your Heads, Kefelai Hemin, Their Heads, Kefelai Sisi, their jaws. Genua Sisi, our feet. Podes Hemin, their elbows. Ancona Sisi, their bosoms. Colpoi Sisi, our ankles. Sforahe Min. We also use the dative to indicate spatial relationships, mostly like being inside something. So we have the dative used to express things like food in my belly, a bee getting in my ear, a scepter in my hand, leaning on my shoulder, or he spoke and stirred the souls in their breasts. Use the verb klinomai to say that you're leaning it against the given body part. Back. Klinomai noto. I lean against his lower arm. Clean on my peche. Shoulder. Omo. Knee. Guni. Elbow. Anconi. Another spatial relationship is to be under something expressed with the preposition hupo. Hupo takes either the dative or the accusative in these cases with about the same meaning. Let's start with some examples where we'll use the dative. I'll give you some English phrases, then the corresponding Greek phrase, which is uh, paraphrased from Homer with the word order rearranged so that the uh, part of the body that we're talking about under comes last, and you fill in the body part in the dative, in either the plural or the singular. The earth groaned beneath their feet. Gaia stenachizato hupo posin. He put his beautiful sandals on his feet. Kala pedila desato hupo posin. He struck Apisaon, and immediately he loosened his knees out from under him. 
Balen apisaona, eithar elusen upo. Gunati. Now let's do a couple of examples using the accusative. The spear cut through his teeth under his tongue. Dora tame anodontas hupo. Glosan. The strap was choking him by the throat. He must anken hupo. De rain. Homer has a large stock of stereotyped phrases and epithets involving parts of the body. For instance, Rhododactylos eos, rosy fingered dawn. Achilles and Iris are referred to as fleet footed, so we have Podaso kos Achilleus, Podaso kea iris. When someone makes a poetic or persuasive speech, we hear about their winged words. Epeopteroenta. Now we'll do some phrases modeled on phrases from Homer, some of them stereotype phrases, which involve the following body parts. Haima. Kolpos. Her. Pus. I'll read aloud a phrase in English, followed by the Greek. The Greek will be a simplified version of some actual words from Homer with the word order rearranged so that the body part comes last. You fill in the body part in either the singular or the plural, and all of these are phrases in which the body part would be in the dative. The earth ran with black blood. Gaia re melaina haimati. Carrying the child upon her bosom. Echusap haidepi. Kolpo. Holding a sword in his hand. Fazganon echonen. Heri. Carrying spears in their hands. Enchea echontes. Hersim. Oh, Zeus, let me subdue Alexander to my hands. Oh, Zeu, Alexandron damasaimi en me supo. Hersim. To say that someone was born, we can say. He fell between the feet of a woman. Pese gunai kosmeta posim. As an interesting grammatical footnote, in Greek, when you modify a noun with another noun, genitives modify datives and datives modify genitives. And that's why in posi gunai kos, gunai kos is in the genitive, even though we would normally use the data to show the possessor of a body part. A river is personified and is described as murmuring with foam and with blood and dead bodies. Foam is afros. Complete the following phrase. Mormon afro tekai Haimati kai nekuasi. Now let's do some examples with the preposition n, which takes the dative. I'll give the nominative, either singular or plural, and you give the correct form with n. Her and heri. Heres. And her seen. Palamai. And palame seen. Al hain. And al hani. Gaster. 
in GAS3. Sometimes, before a word that starts with a consonant, for metrical reasons, Homer uses the alternative form of N, which is any. Answer the next couple of questions using any. Stethos. Any stethesin. Frenes. Any fresin. I'll read some phrases from Homer aloud in translation, and then I'll have you fill in just the Greek translation of the part that is N plus the dative of a body part. Suffering pain among the dead. Neques and nequesi. Already I have discharged eight long-bearded arrows and they have all been fixed in the flesh of warlike youths, but I cannot strike this raging dog. Chros and Chloe. That's the end of the recording. Thanks for listening.